Okay, well, we start the show today, not surprisingly, in the bush and at a harvesting coop, Nick, in the central highlands of Victoria. Glorious afternoon it is too. Behind us are some Vic Ash logs about to go to the mill where they are potentially anything, Andrew. Flooring, furniture, family, heirlooms. But this place here is just the very beginning of a much more complex timber story. Before this timber finds its way into your home as a crafted finished product, it'll pass through many hands and create a range of jobs along the way. No surprise that the timber industry is a big employer, but the rural urban mix may surprise you. The forest and wood products sector in Victoria employs about 24,000 people across the state, as well as contributing to another 42 to 52,000 people's jobs indirectly. Um, a lot of those jobs are actually in metropolitan Melbourne. About 14,000 people in metropolitan Melbourne are employed by the industry. Much of that in timber manufacturing. So from the bush and into the city, this is Melbourne, Nick. And did you know that most of the timber industry are employed, in fact, in the big cities in town? A little known fact, Andrew, but if you're sitting in your lounge chair watching this, take the time to have a look around you, whether it's the floorboards or the architraves or potentially the staircase. There are a lot of timber products in everybody's houses that take hundreds and hundreds of hours to make, and most likely they were made in a factory like this in the big city. No better example of that than here in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. Tom Ackroff's great grandfather was one of the founding partners of Slattery Ackroff Stairs back in the 20s. They used to deliver staircases around Melbourne in a wheelbarrow. Today, the company spans three states and employs 120 people. We're extremely lucky. We have uh, what would some may describe as um, a little bit odd, but we have um, over 30 people who've worked for us for over 25 years. So to have that sort of level of experience and um, the loyalty within the, the group and the brand, people really like coming to work, they like training others and they like teaching. That collective skill set is one important arm of the business, but even in this very traditional trade, Slattery and Akaroff are striving to streamline their processes with the latest computer-driven robotic hardware. A little further down the bay in pink doors and windows, likewise, relies on resource from native forests for its Vic Ash to turn out thermal performance products. The company trusts its innovation and the very latest equipment to give it a competitive edge. So what we do is, to compete with your global market, We've taken um, a lot of our intellectual property and stuff suppose, from Germany, which is a manufacturing powerhouse, right? So they have a high labour cost as well, which Australia does. So we invest in a lot of uh, high-end machinery, which means we can output more windows with the same amount of staff um, at a really high quality and really consistent quality as well, which is important. Indeed, innovation is the buzzword around the industry at the moment and you don't have to go far to see companies gearing up and retooling to work smarter. This is Australian Sustainable Hardwoods and here innovation is leading the way. they found a way to turn little pieces yes. of timber like this which aren't very useful into great big pieces of timber which are very useful. I caught one this big. new $2.5 million finger jointing line allows smaller offcuts to be seamlessly fused together into standard lengths of appearance grade timber, meaning less waste and higher value products. Twofold, it's the, it's the increase in recovery and the increase in value recovery. So, so from this machine, we're looking to see around about 2 to 2.5% 2 increase in recovery, but more importantly, we're looking to gain another 4% in value recovery. So that's taking wood that would be otherwise in a, in a low grade or, or in waste and taking that wood and putting it into a high grade use. At nearby Australian Paper, the Latrobe Valley's biggest private employer, the theme of innovation is taking the shape of a $90 million investment in recycling. This de-inking plant currently under construction will transform what happens to Australia's waste paper. Very simply put, we will be taking approximately 80,000 tonnes of of uh, waste office paper predominantly um, and putting it through a process to clean, screen and make that fibre good for reuse or recycled in our paper products, mainly refex. 
And the stockpiling of waste paper has already started. This warehouse west of Melbourne holds about 3,000 tonnes of waste, most of which would have found its way into landfill if not for the innovation at Australian Paper. It's, it's very, very important. I think any company that stands still nowadays and doesn't innovate with its products and its offering to the marketplace will eventually um, um, die a slow death. All that industry, all that innovation counts for very little if there isn't the raw material to feed it. Here in Australia there are two complementary but distinctly different sources of timber raw material. The two supply lines are of course natural forest and plantation forest. The big question is why do we need both? They actually provide different products. Um, what you see in staircases, for instance, is likely from um, high quality, for instance, Victorian ash timber, which we supply from well-managed native forests over a very long rotation. And what you can see here is timber framing that comes from our plantation forests, which are actually a pine resource. And that's incredibly important for the building sector. On the native side, the species provides slow-grown, stable and strong timber. It's the hardwood that goes into the high-end appearance market. The timber comes from publicly owned forests, which are managed to maintain conservation, social and economic values. And all of those values are managed with balance uh, and it's a big responsibility on our shoulders to continue in, to ensure we get that balance right. We think we've got the fundamentals right. Uh, really, of the, the around about seven and a half million hectares of publicly owned forest in Victoria, we harvest in around about 6% of that area. But within that 6%, uh, we still need to do that responsibly and still need to meet community expectations. In our native bush, every tree harvested is replaced with another and the forest is organically regenerated without chemicals or fertiliser in a process designed to mimic nature. That's not always the case with timber we import from other countries. Nearly all of what we compete against that's imported into Australia is from natural forests. Virtually none of it is from plantation forests. And I'd like to think, and the evidence is there to say, that our natural forests are a lot better managed than many of the others around the world, particularly from the tropical countries. So what then of the plantation estate in Victoria? 430,000 hectares are intensively managed to grow trees, almost half that area dedicated to hardwood production. So why not get our high-end saw logs from these forests? There are indeed massive amounts of land put into hardwood plantation. That's one of these fellas here, a blue gum, Nick, but no good for saw logs because look at it, it's not big and straight. There's no clear lengths of timber. The other point about these trees, Hardy, is the fact that they grow so quickly that when you dry the timber, invariably it cracks or splits. So never be a saw log, that tree. So no good for furniture, flooring or a staircase, but where plantation hardwood comes into its own is as a fibre for producing high quality paper. Australian paper provides an important local market for plantation hardwood and softwood from central Victoria and low-grade certified wood from Vic Forests which would otherwise be burnt or exported as wood chips and is a vital part of the sustainable local Victorian timber industry and the 24,000 jobs it directly supports. The other type of plantation that people would be familiar with are these little babies here. They sort of look like Christmas trees. They're pine trees, Nick. Andrew, originally from California, they are Pinus radiata. They are the house frames, the tissues, the toilet paper. In a lot of ways, they are the unsung heroes of the Australian timber industry. There's a multitude of products that the pine can fulfil. The paper mill, for instance, uses both pine and eucalypt product, and they produce different, different grades of paper. So whether it's softwood or hardwood, native or plantation grown, the timber and wood product sector is a huge economic driver with employment benefits in the cities and the bush. And more and more, timber is becoming the environmental product of choice. That's why I'm proud of being a forester is that there's no better resource than, than timber. Uh, it's generally seen as a carbon positive resource. I don't think there's any other uh, resource that you can claim that with and that's because uh, as the trees are growing they're absorbing carbon out of the atmosphere 
when the timber gets processed, the carbon gets locked up in the products that are produced. And then, you know, what we're doing is we replant what we harvest. And so the new trees then draw more carbon out of the atmosphere. So I think environmentally, you can't get a better product than wood, personally. In Victoria, the forest and wood products sector employs 24,000 people directly, most in manufacturing roles with another 50,000 or so indirectly. Around 6% of the state's publicly owned forests are available for high value timber production. The plantation estate stretches to almost half a million hectares and is roughly half and half hardwood and pine. To find out more, head to vaffy.com.au.